two guys. They've got nine people back in pass coverage, and it's hard to throw the ball into all those trees. It's like trying to throw the ball through the woods. You've got so many guys standing back there, there's no place to throw it. A loss all the way back to the 17-yard line, so that'll bring Kirk Kennedy into the ball game. Very low kick, extremely low kick. A fair catch called and taken by Harvey Smith. Timeout with 5.22 left in the first half in Morgantown. The Mountaineers have a two-touchdown advantage over the Cardinals. Pete Campisi and I will have more in just a moment. When I came to America from Russia, I discovered many wonderful things, like blue jeans, unopened mail, and light beer from Miller. When I tasted this light, I said to myself, what a country. Light has great taste. Light's also less filling with third less calories than the regular beer. In America, there is plenty of light beer, and you can always find a party. In Russia, party always finds you. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Hey! The big guys upstairs won't let us air this commercial. Said it looks too much like news. Well, it is news. Big news. Especially if you're interested in saving money. Like this. For a limited time, you can give your budget a bigger break than ever before with special 7.7% GMAC financing on almost every new car, truck, and van at Broadway Chevrolet. For more news about the Broadway budget break, check our used car listings in the classified section of Sunday's newspaper. Announcing the Broadway budget break only at Broadway Chevrolet. An epic six-hour miniseries capturing the exotic splendor of India. Featuring an all-star cast. The drama. The excitement. The romance. A forbidden love between an Indian princess and a British officer during India's struggle for independence. The Far Pavilion. Beginning Monday, September 16th on TV41. If you or a member of your family have been injured or killed by a defective product, you have a right to seek damages. Your claim may be brought against the manufacturer, seller, or distributor. In many cases, work-related injuries and consumer injuries are caused by dangerous products. In such cases, your attorney will explain your rights and remedies. Time is critical. Kentucky has a one-year limitation within which such actions may be brought. A public service message of the Kentucky Academy of Trial Attorneys and this station. Had a flag on the play. And the Cardinals will be penalized 15 big ones. Personal foul. Boy, that hurts, especially after a fair catch when nothing really happened. I thought we dodged a bullet there, John. The, the punt went off the side of his foot and was a line drive, the kind that really get that you, you can return real well. But he called for a fair catch instead. Tally going for it all right away again, looking for Phillips, and he has it. Touchdown, Mountaineer. Okay, absolute perfect execution by Tally to Phillips. Watch this ball. This, this is like dropping it in the well. There's nowhere that thing could go except right there. Perfect spot, perfect execution. That's why another six down. I tell you what, these, these young corners, they may be getting burned a little bit today, but they're going to be tough. That's that Cole got, uh, got burned that time, but uh, we'll come around. Bowman with the extra point. Tax on point number 28 for the Mountaineers. That was a 35-yard pass from Tally to Phillips. And Pete, right after the short punt, the fair catch and the penalty, the Mountaineers went for the juggler vein and came up with a big six-point play. That is not unusual to, uh, to have a big change in field position like that to, to go for it, especially in that, that, that side of the field. You're in the close to four-down four territory. You're moving the ball offensively. Why not? You know, go for the throat one time. But two times and three times, <laughs> I tell you what, we got 28-7 to seven right now. It's not looking good for our hometown cards. Number 23 is another freshman for the Cardinals. 
Craig Swayback, freshman out of Lake Worth Leonard High School in Florida. 5'9", 190 pounder. Well, I expect down in years to come, we'll have what, uh, somewhat of a pipeline from Florida to go to Louisville. I know when I played, you played back, we had some players from Florida, some good players from Florida come up, played for the cards. Bowman's kick hits at the goal line and goes into the end zone. Well, we have the Camden connection in basketball, Pete. There you go. Not the Citrus connection in football. Hey, let's do it. Get them from down in Dade County and Broward County, all those good football players down in that area. But we, we, we did quite well out of the state of Kentucky, too, Don. We got some good kids that uh, came in from the state, and I think football in the state of Kentucky is coming around, getting better than it ever has. We pan the crowd of over 61,000. There you see Howard Schnellenberger with Chris Pagotis on his right, the offensive line coach, and Gary Nord, who works with the tight ends on his left. 28-7 West Virginia. This is way back, I believe it is, as he fights his way out to the 25-yard line. Boy, those freshmen went through a training camp, Pete, that uh, I'm sure most of them didn't expect. Hey, we're coming off tackle. Good block. Good block, good run by the freshman. Picked up five yards, well-executed play. It wasn't spectacular. We didn't get 50, but we got five. Holloway on the stop as we look at another angle. Unbalanced backfield behind Rubert. And Swayback will try the left side this time and squirms a little bit short of the first down yardage. Needed to be at the 30. He's about at the 29. Okay, same play back the other side. See the left guard pulling. Getting up on the numbers. Ooh, good defensive play. I tell you what, that, that's, that's a big defensive play there, bud. Holly was the guy that made it for the Mountaineers. There's the statistics on Ed Rubert here in the first half. Adams has the first yes. down as he's shoved out of bounds on the Cardinals side of the field at about the 34. Good blocking by the left side of the offensive line. Sealed the defense inside. Adams went around, pick up, pick up the uh, down easy. Look at that block by the tight end. Coming off there, Swyback getting into the defensive back. Good block. Key first down. We've, we've got to give that defense some rest down. They've been on the field quite a bit. And uh, we need to keep the offense going, rattle the chains a little bit, get a couple first downs, and give the defense a rest. First and 10, Louisville from the Cardinal 33. Play action, Ruber in traffic, fires, and is it caught by Givens? Yes, he caught it. The crowd doesn't agree, but Ernest Givens with a nice catch, just shy of the 50-yard line. Let's see on that map. That should be about Charleston, West Virginia. Okay, play action pass, fake it to the tailback off tackle, sits up, good protection by the line. Rupert avoids a strong safety blitz, finds Givens coming across, look at this, reaching back behind the flow. Here we are, right here, you can see the ball thrown behind him. Oh, great catch, no question about it. If only the fans, 61,000 fans could have seen that, that replay, Don, they would, wouldn't have been booing. You want a bad? <laughs> I believe the Mountaineers taking a quick timeout. Now they got things rolling again. We have 3.47 to go in the first half. West Virginia on top, 28 to seven. Wilbert unofficially eight of 18 for 145 yards to the air in the first half of play. High formation backfield this time. Swayback gets to the midfield stripe, fumbles the ball, but he was already down. Nate is getting a little restless, Don. They didn't like that call either. Here's the replay. This time it's, it, it is the actual running play that they've been faking on the passes. You can see he's got possession. Ball is on the ground, no question about it. It was not a fumble. Ball was dead right there at the 50-yard line. Right at the bottom of the state of West Virginia, as we can see. I think sometimes fans look with their hearts instead of their eyes. <laughs> no question about that one. Rupert, play action, going for the bomb, and Givens, and it's intercepted. A great defensive play by Stacy Smith. 
He and Gibbons were fighting for the ball, but it was Smith, the winner of that battle, at the 15-yard line of the Mountaineers. Okay, we've had Gibbons overthrown while he was open three different times, I believe, in his first half. And this time, Rupert takes a little bit off it and underthrows him, and consequently, interception right there. Good defensive play. Gibbons did the best he could to try to take it back away. Those receivers got to become defensive backs when the ball's put in, the, in that position, Don. Tally to Hollifield. Hollifield has some room. It's a foot race now, and Hollifield is finally pulled down in Cardinal territory, but not before he gets to the 41. Don Cosby is the guy that saved the touchdown. Okay, watch this left side. They seal the defense inside. The guard pulls, gets a scraping linebacker. Here comes the fullback. Hollifield makes a nice cut inside. And now it's a foot race. You'll see Cosby coming in right there. Cosby does a nice job. Does a nice job. Saves the touchdown. He also got a hand in the face from Hollifield. A little backward straight arm there. Tally up in the air again, but overthrows the intended receiver Phillips around the 10. Covering on the play was Antonio Davis, the freshman out of Louisville Ballard, who was a walk-on, but now has earned a scholarship. Well, Louisville came with a blitz that time down. They lined up in a four-man, four man-to-man coverage. Came with the inside linebackers, Battaglia. Of course, Tally got the ball off before he'd get there, but it was incomplete. Hatfield, or excuse me, Hollifield has carried 11 times for 126 yards, but this is his replacement, Gray. And Gray takes it down to the Cardinal 35. Hollifield last year, the whole season, only gained 311 yards. Replay coming right off left side tackle. Good play by Battaglia. Gain of about six yards on the play. It's going to be third down and four. We're under the two-minute mark here in the first half with the Mountaineers up 28 to 7. Quick out to Hollifield, who again was set up instead as a tailback in a slot to the left. Anthony Moss on the stop for the Cardinals. Okay, what they're doing is they're spreading the defense all across the field. They've got receivers from sideline to sideline. Tally stands up. He picks out which one's open the most and throws a quick step, three-step three quick out to, uh, to Hollow Field there, and they pick up an easy first down. First and 10 Mountaineers inside the Louisville 25 at the 24. Tally to Hollow Field again, and Hollow Field follows his blocking and gets it inside the 20. They're going to spot it just inside the 18-yard line. Bobby Jefferson on the stop. Apples to Watermelon's theory is working again, Don. Offensive line from West Virginia coming off, knocking Louisville off the ball, and picking up six, five, six, seven yards of crack. Hollifield to the near side, inside the 15. Moss was there again, along with Avery Marshall. Clock down to just over a minute in the first half, and it's going to be close enough that they'll bring the chains across and measure. All right, Don, if we can hold them out here, it'd be a, be a boost for us going in, which we know we need. This is a key, uh, key down here. As they measure, again, we'd like to remind you that UofL season football tickets can be purchased at the new UofL ticket office in the west wing of the KFEC. Over 21,000 season tickets have been sold, so you need to act now. It is a Mountaineer first down. Now, while we have a lull here, I'd like to Give some good wishes to a couple of friends of ours, former Cardinal players recouping from uh, some illnesses. Otto Knopf and Dr. Bill Slider. We hope you guys are feeling a lot better these days. One minute and a half. Fine people. And they know our thoughts are with them. From the near hash, tally. By the bootleg. It's complete. 
to Gay, and then it pops out after John was out of bounds at the five. Calvert Cole knocked that football loose. Has same play down. Here it is on the replay. Same play they scored on their first touchdown. A little counter action, play action, freezing the defensive secondary, bringing it to the fullback coming out of the back. Oh, good hit. Here we got another action here. Another shot of it. Right there, looked like Cole coming up, sticking it to him. Hollifield on a sweep to the right, gets away from Battaglia, and he's in the corner for the touchdown. Boy, is he a strong runner. As you can see, this is that play they run. Here comes Battaglia. Look at the straight, straight arm. Knocks Battaglia right off. We get a good block by the fullback. Backside linebacker, not quite quick enough to get to the uh, pursuit angle. Well executed play by West Virginia. Boy, that's a big, strong runner. Like that kid, Don. That takes the count to 34 to seven as Bowman for the PAT effort. It's true. And it's West Virginia 35 and Louisville seven. That's the second touchdown in the game for Hollifield. That one covered five yards earlier. He had an 18-yard jump. Cardinals have moved the ball well here in the first half, but a couple of turnovers led to West Virginia drives and touchdowns. And, and now when that momentum begins to swing, Pete, things seem to always go right for the team that have momentum. Yep, the old Mo is on the blue team right now. But I tell you what, I'm not counting Howard Snellenberger out ever. Clock may run out, we may be behind, but it's only the first game of the season. There he is, he's not giving up. Not that man, he's been through too many wars. If the clock runs out and we're behind in this one, Donnie, he'll get him ready the next week. Swayback, number 23, is standing about a yard deep in the end zone. Number eight, Bowman, approaches the ball. Swayback will take this one a yard deep. He's going to bring it out to the 15, to the 18. You can hear the pads popping again. Yeah, plastic is popping all over the place. And that's on both sides, too, John. Cardinals are coming out. They're not, they're not giving up on these guys. West Virginia's a fine, fine football team. Perennial power, been in bowl games the last four years, and they got a great defense. Super defense. And offensively, they're moving the ball a little bit better than I anticipated that they would. They've hit on some big plays, Pete, and that's something I don't think they really even had last year with a little more experience. That's the trenches you're looking at there. Rubert just takes a snap, and Cardinals want to let the clock run out to end the first half, and we'll try to go to the locker room and regroup. That man there will have something to say. Productive, I'm sure, to his team in the Cardinal locker room. Louisville should not have to take another snap because there's 14 seconds on the 25-second clock and seven on the game clock, and now you can see the teams headed to the locker room. Well, in the first half, it's been all West Virginia after the Cardinals fought tooth and nail very early in the game. But here at halftime, it's West Virginia 35 and Louisville 7. And we'll have halftime entertainment for you after these commercial messages. filled with all the stimulation they need. We offer Pepsi Free, made with absolutely no caffeine. The only stimulating thing about it is that exhilarating Pepsi taste. Caffeine Free, Pepsi Free, because life is stimulating enough. Available in regular and diet. 
It's a new morning. It's a good time for a McDonald's taste. You're gonna find in a fresh baked biscuit, bacon, egg, and cheese, crispy bacon. It's the one for me. It's a new biscuit. Crack a fresh egg. Top that bacon with fresh grade A. Bacon, egg, and cheese. Cause it's a good time for the great taste of McDonald's. Now through September 29th, McDonald's is offering any fresh baked biscuit sandwich with egg for just 79 cents. So come get them while they're hot. In Beatmont, Plary, where they're having a very special halftime dress here in the booth. Here in Morgantown, West Virginia, the president of the University of Louisville, Dr. Donald Swain. And Dr. Swain, you've been at University of Louisville now a few years, and things are very positive, and everyone's worked very hard to get it that way. And I know that you have to feel for Coach Snellenberg a little bit now because you've been through this. Well, I have. We have a lot of momentum now at uh, UofL, and that didn't happen overnight, so I'm not a bit discouraged. We've uh, started on a trek that will take us uh, several years, and I think we're up against a veteran top 20 team today, so this shouldn't be too much of a surprise. Dr. Swain, you have to be so pleased and, and just really amazed, like we all are, I guess, at this point, the way the community has rallied around Coach Schnellenberger and what the university is trying to do with its football program. I couldn't be happier, Don. Uh, we now have more than 21,000 season tickets sold. That's a record. Uh, we have an enormous amount of support generated in the community. I don't think for a minute that uh, the setback today will change that a bit. I think that the community will continue to build in its support for the next several years, and uh, we're going to have you know exciting time. Dr. Swain, that brings me to the next point. When we talk about athletics at the University of Louisville, it's come such a long way uh, just in the short period of time that I've been around the university again from a point where there was some talk years ago of not having football anymore to a point now where the Athletic Association has an affiliated corporation and we're self-supported. That's a big task to accomplish, hasn't it? It was a tremendous task, and I, I'm very proud that we've done that. Not only are we self-supporting, we're building up a, a, a very sizable reserve fund, and there are not many athletic programs in the country that can say that. And then if football really takes off, and I think clearly it's going to, uh, that will allow us to build greater and greater quality in all the other sports the non-revenue sports, so I think we're on a roll in athletics. Dr. Swain, what about some of the other positive things that have been working within the university and your involvement with those just most recently? Well, I feel very good about what's happening in the University of Louisville. Uh, I think we're very much on the rise. Uh, we have, I think, unprecedented support in the community and around Kentucky. Uh, we're building quality. We're raising a lot of money for our quest for excellence. I think we have uh, good support in the state capital, politically speaking. Uh, we have alumni groups that are interested all over the country. Uh, so I think we're, we really have a well-known reputation right now for being where the action is in Kentucky higher education, and I think it's well-deserved. Well, Dr. Swain, we appreciate you taking the time. I know you're trying to get out in the stands today and enjoy this game, but uh, your leadership for the university and athletics has been very important. I'm sure very many people are very appreciative. Thank you, Don. That's Dr. Donald Swain, the president of the University of Louisville. We'll have another special halftime guest when we continue after this timeout. When you start something good, everyone wants a piece of it. Take light beer for Miller. Now there's lots of light beers out there saying they're less filling. Heck, that was the easy part. The hard part is brewing a light beer that tastes great. That's why light's always brewed only with the finest ingredients. To let all that great beer taste come through for guys like you and me. The taste that's made light beer for Miller, America's favorite light beer. Hey, I always thought it was easy opening cans. <laughs> If you've ever bought a car, chances are you've been lost in the automotive jungle, a tangled snarl of decisions to face, hundreds of makes, models, and options from which to choose. But there is a civilized outpost in the jungle. Tom Pay at Buick, where relaxed professionals help you sort out your choices, help you decide what's right for you, right down to the price. Tom Pay at Buick, it's the little things we do that help you beat the automotive jungle. I beat the jungle. Uh, we beat the jungle. Dr. Hammond, the Vice President for Student Affairs, is our special guest here in the booth. And Dr. Hammond, this is your first year as the guy that organizationally is over intercollegiate athletics at the University of Louisville. You've always been very supportive of that and involved in it, uh, but this has to be exciting for you as we start the year for 1985. Well, you're right, Don. It's a special privilege to be able to have something to do with athletics when we have coaches like Howard and Denny and 
and have success in our recruiting. We probably have the best freshman recruiting class in sports like golf and tennis and baseball, as well as football and basketball, in the history of the institution. So athletics is not only well-founded in terms of the quality of our coaches, but well-founded in the freshman class that we have this year. Season ticket sales are at all-time high, over 21,000, 3,000 so for the game at Indiana. Ed, there has to be a direct parallel between the success and interest in an athletic team and the university. You're the guy that has to recruit the students, too. Well, I have a little bet with the admissions staff. I told them, I said, they need to get more students and we can sell season tickets. And it looks like right now we may have an all-record high in students at the University of Louisville. And we don't want to get too big. We want to stress excellence. But we're close to 20,000 students. But uh, we sold more season tickets than that. We're over 21,000 and still going with two weeks to go. So. I think, uh, you know, probably we're going to sell, sell a heck of a lot more season tickets than we have students, but that's all right. Ed, just most recently, we're on television, but let's talk radio. Uh, most recently, just a few days ago, a very exciting thing happened with a new radio contract. And again, part of the building process. I know you want to talk about that a moment. Well, you know, athletics is a very complicated business, and it is a business at the University of Louisville. It's a separate corporation, but we're very closely tied to the university. And the university and the athletic association entered into a new six-year agreement with WHAS Radio. The first year of that agreement provides us a, a lot more resources than we had before. But the last five years also provides us something we've been looking for, and that is a 50,000-watt clear channel radio station to broadcast our athletic program on that uh, when we have games, it won't be interrupted by any other kinds of broadcasts. Now, we know that the University of Kentucky has been with HES for a long time, and that relationship has been very beneficial to them. We hope that continues, and we hope we can share WHAS and can share that beneficial relationship that that 50,000-watt channel can, uh, can bring. But regardless of what happens, we know that we will be their number one program, and we're very, very proud of that. As I told Dr. Swain, I know you're excited about getting the year underway, and we appreciate you taking the time to stop by and talk to us. Well, thank you very much. You're doing a great job. That's Dr. Ed Hammond, the Vice President for Student Affairs at the University of Louisville. Pete Campisi and I will return with more after this timeout. It's a new morning. It's a good time for a McDonald's taste. You're gonna find in a fresh baked biscuit, bacon, egg, and cheese, crispy bacon. It's the one for me. It's a new biscuit. Crack a fresh egg. Top that bacon with fresh grade A. Bacon, egg, and cheese. Cause it's a good time for the great taste of McDonald's. Now through September 29th, McDonald's is offering any fresh baked biscuit sandwich with egg for just 79 cents. So come get them while they're hot. So, you think you're going to win the new Pepsi Touchdown game? You know, to be eligible to win, the number underneath your Pepsi bottle caps and can taps has to match the number of touchdowns scored by your local team. Know what a touchdown is? So how are you so sure you're going to win the Pepsi Touchdown game? I buy a lot of Pepsi. Oh. Play the Pepsi-Cola Louisville Cardinal Touchdown game. Be part of it. West Virginia had the option in the first half, so the Cardinals elect to take the football as we begin the second half of play with that score story on your screen. And, Pete, this has to be an important drive for the Cardinals, particularly the way the momentum was at the end of the first half. Exactly. Seemed, things seemed to get away a little bit for the Cards. And uh, went a little downhill. We got a little flat. But uh, it is a very important drive. We come back, put some points on the board. Uh, save a little face. I think that uh, you know, we can still still make this thing an interesting contest. 23 is Craig Swayback, who has been returning some kickoffs and also has got his first action in Cardinal football. The young freshman Roman kicks it high end over end and deep into the end zone, and Swayback will not bring it out as he bobbles it around a bit. That was a good deep kick by Bowman. Of course, he didn't do any cheerleading that time, Don. That's why he didn't kick it into the front row bleachers back there, back behind the end zone. Louisville will have it first down and 10 from its own 20-yard line. And on the scoreboard, they have defense in big letters, and boy, they 
Mountaineer defense has been outstanding today. Ed Rupert brings him up the back split. John Adams gets the first call and has short yardage. And Pete, some first quarter or first half statistics. As you can see, uh, we've got behind them 35 to uh, 7. First downs, West Virginia's ahead 15 to 10 for Louisville. Yardage rushing, Hollyfield. I don't know how many he's racked up uh, initially. Looks like 148 net yards for Hollyfield. Of course, uh, Mountaineers are out rushing us 192 to 39. Passing, they're ahead us again, 147, Louisville 143. Second down and nine. Rupert back to throw. Completes it to Adams at the 26. Van Richardson knocks him down at the 26-yard line. Well, here's an interesting stat, Johnny. Tally is 11 of 15 with no interceptions. That's awfully good for a, for a first year. Here's a dra straight drop back pass, and we got... Adams just hooking up right in front of the linebackers for an easy seven-yard gain. Those are those are the easiest passes in football to throw. Third down and four for the Cardinals. Greg Bianco over the ball. And Rupert back to pass. Under some pressure, steps up. In and out of the hands of Swayback. That would have been enough for first down yardage. Hollifield, as I mentioned last year, Pete, on the year, only picked up 311 yards all season long. 148 here in the first half. Well, Kirk he Kennedy is, into the game, now to punt. He has certainly done some work off season. He is, I've looked at film preparing myself for this game, and he's a bigger, stronger runner than I saw last year on film. Kennedy gets the kick away. It's taken at the 30-yard line by Johnson. Johnson to the near side and runs into a wall of white shirts at about the 37-38. So the Mountaineers will go on offense for the first time here in the second half of play. Ed Rubert in the first half was 8 of 18 with two interceptions, 143 yards, was sacked once. Adams, the leading ball carrier, 10 attempts and 31 yards. This is Hollifield, who we've talked about, and Hollifield still on his feet and fights up close to the midfield strike. Sean Sinclair and Matt Battaglia combined for the Cardinal defense. Here we have West Virginia with their strength into the sideline, blocking down on the defense, good pull, good trap block, not a trap block, but a good cut block by the guard. And they're working the, the weak side of the defense with the strength of the offense. They put more people into the sideline. They're in the same formation again here. And it's the first man through the fullback. Once again, showed the look of an option that time, Don. That's only second time all game they've, they've showed that look. John Gay on that last carry. Last year, he picked up 416 yards, was the second leading rusher in 84. He's out of Monroeville, Pennsylvania. Second down and about six. Hollow field to the near side and has the first down. The Mountaineers have moved inside the Cardinal 35-yard line. Battalion Cosby again for the Cardinal defense. Same play. Starts off tackle, bounces it outside, gets good execution. Good execution by that offensive left side. And Pete with the Mountaineer 35 to 7 advantage, they with the strong offensive line can, I guess, just pound the ball like this. Now they throw a pass this time to win, and win gets to the Cardinal 20. Tally just a couple of steps back and flipped it out to Keith Wynn, a freshman from Dayton, Ohio. When we say freshman for the Mountaineers, they're redshirt freshmen. Okay, West Virginia put their strength into the sideline again. Louisville adjusted to that, which left the wide field a little soft, and they turned around and picked up the uh, quick, quick stop pass. Back to that side. Another Mountaineer first down, down to the Cardinal 20-yard line. The ball squarely in the middle of the field. This is Hollifield, and he's tripped up right at the line of scrimmage, but his momentum carried him down close to the 15. 
Mike Minogue tripped him up first. Good and play by Mike Minogue here. They got a little seam. Minogue right there does a great job. He's being blocked, but yet he still fights off the blocker, gets a hand on Hollowfield's leg and pulls him down. Minogue is a junior out of Riverdale, Illinois. 6'1", 220-pounder. Gay, the big fullback, tried to pull it straight ahead, but the Cardinal defense doesn't give anything there. I look for him down to come. Here they are giving the first man through with the option look. As you can see, he gave it to the fullback, but the, the quarterback and the tailback continued down the line of scrimmage with the option look. I would look for them to go ahead and run the option. Looks as though they're trying to set it up to me, doesn't you, Don? Sure does. Concerned Howard Schnellenberger looks on. Third down and five. This is Gay, the big fullback. He has first down yardage as he crosses the 10. Cosby and Sinclair came up from the secondary to make the stop. Okay, single back set. Just a little toss sweep, left side, back to the weak side. End of the short field, once again, good execution by blocking, good execution by West Virginia. Line of scrimmage is now the six yard line where it's first down and goal for West Virginia. Gay coming to the near side, and again, you can hear the pads popping, and Gay fights down to the three. It's been a very hard-hitting game, Pete. Hard-hitting game. Great play by Battaglia, strong side linebacker. Watch him scrape, come right off this tackle, right there, block, make the tackle, come off the blocker, rather, make the tackle on Gay. It's called a scrape technique. Good heady play. Looks so Louisville's going into a goal line defense. Yes, they are. Second and goal from the three. Holla Field tries to go up and over, but doesn't get close to the goal line. Might have made yardage inside the two. Resting just outside the one as we look at it from the end zone. You can see Mano coming in your right side of your screen, right there. Good, good play. Aggressive. We're going to get better. See some bright spots out there. Third down and goal now. Hollifield will try again, and he's in for the touchdown. Field gets his third touchdown of the day. Look at the offensive line coming off the ball for West Virginia. They got a lot of big watermelons, don't they, Don? They certainly do, and Hollifield has to be a pleasant surprise to Coach Don Nealon today. Well, he's having a great day. Bowman for the PAT effort. And it's good. So a timeout with nine minutes and 44 seconds remaining. Third quarter here in Morgantown. It's been all West Virginia. The Mountaineers 42 and the Cardinals 7. The big guys upstairs won't let us air this commercial. Said it looks too much like news. Well, it is news. Big news. Especially if you're interested in saving money. Like this. For a limited time, you can give your budget a bigger break than ever before with special 7.7% GMAC financing on almost every new car, truck, and van at Broadway Chevrolet. For more news about the Broadway budget break, check our used car listings in the classified section of Sunday's newspaper. Announcing the Broadway budget break only at Broadway Chevrolet. Now, as I understand it, Bobby, in baseball, you keep your players in a bullpen, choke your bats and steal bases? That's right, Freddie, and just about everybody drinks light beer for Miller. Oh, this is the one that's less filling. Right again, and that's important to an old base stealer like me, and it tastes great. Certainly does. Now, about these bases, mate, how many did you steal? 681. Wow. 681? Blimey, where do you keep them all? <laughs> light beer from Miller, everything you always wanted in a beer, and less.
Oh, well, he just started the point after touchdown and awaiting waiting a football so he can put the ball back into play as West Virginia is on top 42 to 7. If you join us late, the Cardinals got off to a good start in this contest after West, West Virginia went out to a 7-0 advantage. Louisville came back and tied the game and West Virginia has just done a good job defensively and then taken some advantage of some Cardinal turnovers. But as we mentioned at the very top of this telecast that this is the first report card, so to speak, for Coach Snellenberger and his staff and they'll be going back to work very hard to get some positive things going. This is Swayback in the end zone. He's going to bring it out. And he's across the 20 and fights up to about the 23, 24 yard line. Swayback, one of the fine freshmen that you're going to hear so much from this season for the Louisville Cardinals. Good return. Good return for the young freshman. Was he one of the guys dying that had a happy meal for pregame? <laughs> he might have been. Another freshman doing well. I'll tell you, the more I, I prepared myself for this uh, West Virginia game, the more I looked at West Virginia and saw Michigan. Matter of fact, it came to mind that someone took a, a fine, fine Michigan team and cloned them and sent them to Morgantown, West Virginia. I mean, these guys are they're big, they're quick, they're mobile, they're aggressive, they play great defense, which is a sign that, that Bo Schembechler was does with his, uh, his Wolverine teams up at Michigan. Had an encroachment penalty against the Cardinals, so Bowman will trot back onto the field and tee it up once again, and West Virginia will put the toe to it. It's way back again, will drop back deep. He's standing at the goal line, but Bowman now with a, an additional five yards. Have a great advantage to put it into the end zone. And he does that as Swayback takes it way deep and elects not to bring it out. Boy, he's got a strong lane, Don. Strong leg. Talking about Bowman, Pete. You know, 94 career efforts and field goals in a high school program is just incredible, and he made 87 of them. And, you know, kickers aren't really that highly thought of, but now it's become such a key part of college football. That's a, a big recruiting part of the game. He was the only offensive player they had done. Every time they got the ball, they kicked, must have. That's an awful lot of attempts for uh, high school. This is Willie Shelby, and Shelby crosses the 20 to the 22-yard line. Good defensive pursuit by West Virginia. Coming laterally, they can move left. Watch 50. Smith. Come right in there, scrape laterally. He and the other linebacker right up on the tackle. Number four, Rodney Knighton, the sophomore from Miami, with a good block that time for Shelby. Second down and eight for Louisville. Herbert, back to throw, looking. Still looking, fires, complete to Jones at the 40. He's across midfield. Hang on. All the way down to the 36-yard line of West Virginia. James Jones, the senior, out of Northeast Oklahoma Junior College. He was a teammate there with Ernest Givens, and what a combination that might have been. Tell you, my compliment to Coach Bogotas and the offensive line. They are holding out the Mountaineers great. Look at this protection. Steps right up into the pocket. Still got time, still got time. Here comes Jones across the field. Rupert puts it right on the money, breaks a tackle there. Another tackle, does a nice cut, gets a good block right there. But it, they don't stay away from the ball very long, do they? They close on in that thing awfully fast. First and 10 Louisville now in Mountaineer territory at the 36. Rupert back to throw again, looking long and just throws it away. Junior Jones was on that pass pattern, but was at about the 15. Danny Thomas, the tight end, was more toward the middle of the field. So it's going to be second down and 10. This offense that the Cardinals will be using this year, Pete, has been a very successful one for Howard Schnellenberger at the University of Miami. And Understand it actually started with the Miami Dolphins. Exactly. He's a pro offense, orientated to the pass. 
Rubert does a great job of getting it off to Knighton under some pressure. Knighton fights inside the 30. And then Tracy Curtis, along with Fred Smalls, come up. But give Ed Rubert a lot of credit. Pete, he got rid of that football under an extreme amount of pressure. Okay, here we got him dropping back, and he sets the bait. Watch him set up right there, sets the bait, sucks the lineman in, the defensive lineman, gets the ball off. Knighton does a great job. Put it away. There you go. Put two hands on it. When you see the defense coming in, swarming in, you put two hands on it, wrap it up so he don't cough it up. Third down and a little bit more than three to go for the Cardinals. The ball resting at the 30 of the Mountaineers. Those are Ed Rubert's statistics today. Pretty good day for Ed. Rubert looking and can't complete it to Givens on a square out pattern at about the 26. Excuse me, that was Willie Shelby out of the backfield, the intended receiver. Steve Holloway, the outside linebacker, was covering on Shelby that time, and I think Howard Schnellenberger wants a timeout, and he gets it. I hope Ed isn't uh, deciding on who he's going to throw to before the snap, because he looked at Shelby coming out of the backfield the whole time, and if he would have looked toward the middle and seen our tight end coming across the field, he would have seen one wide open Mr. Thomas. Timeout was 7.30 remaining in the third quarter. We'll return to Morgantown, West Virginia after these commercial messages. It's West Virginia 42, Louisville 7. It's a good time for a McDonald's taste you're gonna find in a fresh baked biscuit, bacon, egg, and cheese, crispy bacon. It's the one for me. It's a new biscuit, crack a fresh egg, top that bacon with fresh grade A, bacon, egg, and cheese. Cause it's a good time for the great taste of McDonald's. Now through September 29th, McDonald's is offering any fresh baked biscuit sandwich with egg for just 79 cents. So come get them while they're hot. Number 10, Ed Rubert, the junior out of New City, New York, who last year set seven school records, had 393 yards in the opening game against Murray State last year. So far, unofficially today, he's 11 out of 24 for 198 yards. That's not bad for a little over half of football. Sure like to have a few more points on the board, though, Don. Tell you what, they're moving the ball. That's what you would see if you're at the top of the new addition, the end of this beautiful football facility. Well, Rupert had the cards ready to go, but you want to set the line of scrimmage again. Seven and a, half to go in the fourth. a lot of these Cardinal players from the Pennsylvania area, as you look at the roster for West Virginia, a great number of players for the Mountaineers from PA. There you hear Rupert barking the signals. Steps up, flips, Knight and had it and dropped it at the 26. So the Mountaineers take over as the Cardinals on fourth down can't convert. And with 7.24 to go in the third quarter, we have another break in the action. West Virginia on top of Louisville, 42 to 7. We'll have more in a moment. Birds fly over the rainbow. Your rainbow's coming to Cardinal Stadium, Louisville. Follow it. Tickets available now at 588-5151. Be part of it. If you've ever bought a car, chances are you've been lost in 
the automotive jungle, a confusing world where shopping for value can wear you out. So much to consider. Quality, price, fuel economy, resale value. But there is a civilized outpost in the jungle. Tom Payette Buick, where relaxed professionals help you set and meet your priorities, right down to the price. A better price. I beat the jungle. Tom Payette Buick. It's the little things we do that help you beat the automotive jungle. <laughs> John Tyler, baby. He's getting a lot of playing time today. Hollifield, who has done so well for the Mountaineers, Don Cosby made the stop. Of course, Don, earlier in the week, Pete, was recovering from an inflamed bout with tonsillitis. Now, that may sound insignificant but when you're the the captain of that defensive secondary and you have to bark signals to make adjustments in the secondary and your th your throat's so sore you can't even talk that does make a difference tally finds his backup tight end phil technip And he has some yardage short of the first down. Okay, here Tally fakes a play-action pass. And he can see the tight end trying to sneak across. Right there, 88. A little drag pattern. Here comes Matt Battaglia coming up. That, that might have been a quick whistle, Don. Third down and two for the Mountaineers. And this is Pecan trying to get the first down. He's going to be very close. Have a flag down on the play. Going to be holding against the Mountaineers. Boy, Antonio Davis came up out of the secondary down and made a great stick. So they walk it off against the Mountaineers and Calvin Phillips comes in as a split end. He'll be bringing in the play from the WVU bench. So it's going to be third down and 11 now for West Virginia. Phillips, the receiver to the left. Two Mountaineers to the right. Tally back to throw. Now he wants to step up and run. And he's not even close to the first down as he slides down at the 35. Excellent coverage by the Cards. Chris Sellers on the stop. And now the Mountaineers will be forced to punt. Excellent coverage. Tally dropped back. Big third and long uh, yarded situation. No one was uh, open. He had to force to run it. Consequently, we kept him from getting the first. Subrick to punt it away and kind of hit it off the side of his foot but gets a friendly bounce out of it. Givens goes back and takes it at the 18 and is on his way down the left sideline, but he stepped out of bounds. Looked like he sliced that one a little bit, Pete. Subaric did off his foot, but got one big hop, and Ernest saw the opening down the sideline. Don't forget, each Thursday here on TV 41 at 10.30 p.m., you can see Coach Nellenberger talking about what's going to happen in Saturday's game in terms of the game plan. That's Countdown to Kickoff with Coach Howard Schnellenberger each Thursday night at 10.30 p.m. here on TV 41. 5.08 to go in the third quarter, 42-7 West Virginia. Rubert back to throw, looking long for Gibbons, and it's overthrown as Gibbons was on the run down at the Mountaineer 40-yard line. Stacy Smith, the strong side corner on the Mountaineer coverage. So they jumped into a man-to-man -man on that coverage there. Don, Louisville has been showing tendencies, especially uh, with the score being what it is, to throw on first down. So they came with a little bit of a blitz, a little weak side blitz, put the safety, uh, the uh, secondary in a man-to-man -man coverage, and uh, forced the deep throw. James Jones comes to the near side, to the left, is Ernest Givens. Rupert, play action. Fires complete to Givens as he goes high to make the catch at about the 34-yard line of the University of Louisville. Tell you what, I think the 
Morgantown Airport caught him on the radar on this one. Watch how high he gets up in the air. Ball's overthrown, but he is, look at that, way up there. Ernest, what an athlete. He's only 5'10", but is a very gifted athlete. As Coach Schnellenberger says, he's a big-time receiver. Is that all he is, Don? You and I can almost look eye-to-eye -eye on him. See. Here's Willie Shelby. Shelby has some running room as he crosses the 40-yard line up to around the 42 on the far side of the field. Okay, here's a replay. Play action pass. No, it wasn't either. It was an off-tackle play in which, which Shelby started right. Nothing there. Bounced it totally around the left side of the offensive line. Picked up a couple key yards. Thought I saw the tight end on a pass route, though. Reason why I thought it was a play. A pass play. Must have been a pretty good fake by <laughs> Fake me out. I'll tell out. you what. Second and I down. got replay, too. Second and three for the Cardinals. Back split. Rubert, a little play action again. And Shelby trying to make the catch down at the 40, but had to turn around for the ball and had it go through his arms and out of bounds. Stacy Smith, we've called that name a lot. He's another one of those many All-American candidates for this West Virginia defense. There you see Gary Nord on the left, Howard Schnellenberger in the middle, and that was Chris Brogotis on the right. How's that? Who's his barber? <laughs> That's, uh, that, is that Brian Jaws? Is that Jaws That's for? Your man. <laughs> like your haircut, Brian. What do you think the barber felt like if he didn't like it? Rupert to throw, and it's intercepted. Oh, no. Picked up at the 45-yard line by Matt Smith. Okay, Roop drops back, straight drop back. Five-step. Looks like he tries to force this in here a little bit. Trying to force it. It's intended for Willie Shelby as we look from the field angle. Another, is that uh, Smith's second interception of the day? I believe it is, Pete. Boy, well, he's, he's tough. Have a new quarterback into the ball game, Mike Tempko. And a reverse to Robert White. And White still on his feet and goes all the way down to the 20-yard line of Louisville. It's a big flanker reverse. We get all the flow going left side, like it's a sprint out, and he just hands it off to the flanker going back the other way. Now, West Virginia's got a wall set, and the Louisville defense actually recovers quite well. Watch Battaglia come in here from all the way on the other side of the field. Cut back right there. Here comes Battaglia. Look at him right there. Now, he was all the way on the other side of the field and make, made a heck of a recovery down to come back and keep that from being a score. This is Gray, and Gray going straight forward, fights inside the 15 to about the 11-yard line of Louisville. Mike Temko is in at quarterback for West Virginia. He's 6'2", 190 pounds, and a sophomore from Euclid, Ohio. Keith Wynn brings in the play from the Mountaineer bench. Is now West Virginia with a second and short yardage situation. Only a yard to go as the ball's at the 11-yard line, as you can see. Gray again has first down yardage, and then a flag goes high in the air. Is that a flag or a pad? Okay, here's replay. Coming right there, isolation. Nothing there, but the back does a nice job. Bounces it back to the left side. Label defenders coming off blocks, make the play, make the stop, but not until it's a first down. Got first and goal here. Green and trainer on the defense. This is Pecan, the fullback, and he is racked up right about at the line of scrimmage. You're right, Pete, it was a pad. Looks like a flag. Okay, you're gonna watch Anthony Trainer here on the replay, the defensive end. Come slicing right in there, right there. Nice defensive play by Trainer. Second down and goal. The ball resting just outside the Louisville five-yard line. Mountaineers on top, 42 to seven, with a minute 40 to go in the third. Here's a good close-up look at Timko. 
to spell John Talley, who started the game and did an excellent job for the Mountaineers. And Gray for the Mountaineer touchdown. I see a yellow, flag. a yellow rag laying there about the three-yard line. Now, you know what that means. A moment ago, Don, you mentioned that uh, one of the West Virginia players was from up in East Euclid, Ohio, which is, of course, right outside of Cleveland. And I was looking at their, their press guide, and they actually have more players from Pennsylvania than they do West Virginia or Ohio, which, of course, they're so close, uh, Morgantown being right on the uh, Pennsylvania border. They, they're in much the same situation that we are in, in Kentucky, Don, in which there aren't... The state is not that heavily populated. There aren't that many high schools in the state. That uh, Here's another replay. See if we pick up who's doing the holding here. Blocking below the waist was the flag, and don't think we could see it there. And now the Cardinals jumped off sides, it appeared, but both sides pointing to the other. It's going to be encroachment against Louisville. So the ball was moved out to the 18, and now they'll step off five against Louisville and take the football down to the 13. Mountaineer cheerleaders, and they've had a capacity crowd of over 61,000 here today. Diane, do I have any eligibility left? Boy, they didn't have cheerleaders like that when I played. <laughs> it's become quite a production now. Of course, the Cardinals have national championship cheerleaders. Tempko's pass is incomplete, intended for Calvin Phillips. Antonio Davis, out of Ballard, was on the coverage. Ballard High School, off to another great start back in Louisville, aren't they, Don? They sure are, and of course, Joey Hamilton, who is a receiver for the Cardinals, another one of those freshmen. Coach Schnellenberger feels very good about Joey and the progress he has made learning about college football. Pete, that is a big change, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's not only a change football-wise, but once you go away from home, even, even if you're staying uh, in the same city, it's a heck of an adjustment for a young man. Tepco tried to get the touchdown and had it to Robert White, but White could not hang on to the football in the corner of the end zone. So it's going to bring up a fourth down situation. It's a heck of an adjustment, as I mentioned, Don, to go away from home and to be in a totally new environment. New environment, new uh, dormitories. You never used to stay in a dorm when you were in high school. So it's uh, it's an adjustment, and it takes a while. So uh, I think the freshmen uh, have, have played well here today, and we're going to look for bigger things to come from them. Bowman for a 30-yard field goal effort, and it's perfect. and boots it through from 30 yards out when in a minute and 10 seconds to go in the third quarter. It's West Virginia 45, Louisville 7. We'll have more from Morgantown after these messages. It's a new morning. It's a good time for a McDonald's taste. You're gonna find in a fresh baked biscuit, bacon, egg, and cheese, crispy bacon. It's the one for me. It's a new biscuit. Crack a fresh egg. Top that bacon with fresh grade A. Bacon, egg, and cheese. Cause it's a good time for the great taste of McDonald's. Now through September 29th, McDonald's is offering any fresh baked biscuit sandwich with egg for just 79 cents. So come get them while they're hot. To those whose lives are filled with all the stimulation they need. Hang on, hang on. We offer Pepsi Free, made with absolutely no caffeine. The only stimulating thing about it is that exhilarating Pepsi taste. Caffeine Free, Pepsi Free. Because life is stimulating enough. Available in regular and diet. Escape to the true adventures of Marco Polo. He battled across fiery deserts and scaled icy mountain peaks. He was taken prisoner by fierce Muslim warriors. By our law and the rules of war, you deserve to die. He challenged Mongol tribesmen, fought with the conquering armies of the great Kublai Khan, and incurred the wrath of the mighty emperor himself. Your heads will roll in the dust. 
Marco Polo. Beginning September 23rd on TV41. Louisville is proud of the James Graham Brown Cancer Center, which is dedicated to the efforts of research, teaching, and patient care. In our laboratories, scientists are conducting research that will help serve as a basis for improvements in cancer prevention, diagnosis, and treatment. At Louisville's James Graham Brown Cancer Center, this important step in the battle against cancer is being fought. Thank you for your continuing support. forget, tomorrow at noon, you can see the Howard Schnellenberger Show here on TV 41 as Coach Schnellenberger will take a look at some of the highlights of this game and discuss what he thinks went right and wrong and also talk with Van Vance about a lot of things pertaining to football. That's the Howard Schnellenberger Show each Sunday. That begins tomorrow at noon here on TV 41. Down to West Virginia University uh, film crew is going to have uh, lots to pick from, from for their highlight film, won't they? They will, and uh, early in that first quarter, didn't get a chance to work it in, but some outstanding plays, the block by Ernest Gibbons, some wow. things that uh, I think the Cardinals will have to pick from in this initial contest. Well, here goes Charlie again. Well, he, he's going to wear his leg out today. Swayback catches the knuckleball at about the five and bulls his way up across the 25-yard line. The Craig Swayback with a nice return for the Cardinals, and Louisville goes on the offense again with a minute three to go in the third quarter. Bo Orlando on the stop for West Virginia. Now they're talking to Ed Rubert about something. There may have been a penalty flag that we did not see. Well, that, was a, that was an encroachment. What about the bird? She needs a breather. <laughs> you talk about being hot. We complain about the lights in the booth. How'd you like to be inside those feathers? I'll tell you what, Kelly, I bet thanks thinks that she's through with that job. She's sitting on a cool set with you on Saturday afternoons or Saturday mornings, rather, isn't she, Doug? She is. She was a great Cardinal bird. Rubert, 12 of 29 now for 213 yards. Rubert going to put it up top long for Gibbons, and it's intercepted. Willie Edwards out of right here in Morgantown picks it off. Mountaineers have it back right away at their own 29-yard line. Okay, here's the replay. Play action. And he's looking at Givens all the way again. And Givens is covered. There's no question about it. Matter of fact, he's surrounded by three West Virginia defensive backs. Let's see, Givens, how many tackles does he have today? <laughs> he's been on the defensive side a bit. Here here's it is another again. angle. He might be one of the leading, uh, I tell you what, we might give him the both sides award for the best block of the day and for uh, leading tackler of the day. Chris Pecan, the ball carrier, and he picks up a couple of tough yards. Matt Battaglia on the stop for the Cardinals. We're approaching the end of the third quarter. Only a half minute to go. The Mountaineers leading 45-7. to seven. They had a 35-7 halftime advantage, so... And fairly even here in the second half. This is Gray with some nifty moves and still on his feet up to the 45 of West Virginia. Don Cosby again came up from his cornerback position to make the hit. The speed and the depth of West Virginia is becoming more evident at each play. Here we're just a step slow and missing the tackle back there at the line of scrimmage. Good run. Tom Gray, by Tom seen, Gray yeah. he's seen a lot of action today. We have some movement right around the line of scrimmage. Mike Temko is number 17. He took over for starter John Talley. It's a procedure penalty against the Mountaineers. 
once that those moves the ball back. Once those offensive linemen put their hand on the ground, John, they can't move it. If they move it before the snap, you got your five, you got flagged, and you got five going the wrong way. Bell and Wynn out to the right. Number 39, Chris Pecan. Here's Pecan again, the carrier. Pecan known as a great blocker, but getting some action carrying the football today. Joe Jackson on Here's the stop. Play. Once again, good, good offensive line surge by West Virginia. That's the end of the third quarter, so we'll be back with the final 15 minutes of action here in Morgantown after these messages with the score, West Virginia 45, Louisville 7. The big guys upstairs won't let us air this commercial. Said it looks too much like news. Well, it is news, big news, especially if you're interested in saving money, like this. For a limited time, you can give your budget a bigger break than ever before with special 7.7% GMAC financing on almost every new car, truck, and van at Broadway Chevrolet. For more news about the Broadway budget break, check our used car listings in the classified section of Sunday's newspaper. Announcing the Broadway budget break only at Broadway Chevrolet. Uncover the untold secrets behind the superstars on the start of something big. John Forsythe, his struggle for success almost cost him his father's love. Mr. T nearly lost his fight with a ghetto. And Linda Evans, helping a teenage friend, won her the first lucky break. Plus Ed Marinaro, Barbara Eaton, Ted Turner, Steve Allen's hilarious beginnings of everyday things, and Star Trek's history-making journey to fame. Tantalizing trivia and superstar success. That's the start of something big. Sunday night at 7.30 on TV 41. Coach no, I still got his jacket on. Excuse me, Glavin. Still got his jacket on. He's not uh, He's not going to take it off. This game, he's still got time to go. 15 more minutes, as a matter of fact. You know, Pete, when you think the amount of time, the lack of amount of time, really, you have, what, 20 practices in the spring and about a month to prepare before the season starts. Had some movement by West Virginia, but... Don't see a flag anywhere. Looked like Pecan moved early in the backfield. He came to a full stop one second before the ball was snapped, which is legal. If he had been moving forward at the snap, we would have been flagged again for uh, another five-yard procedure penalty. Gray has 71 yards and 10 attempts today, so Hollifield is already over the 100-yard mark. They get some company from Gray. Temko brings him up. Third down and about seven and almost intercepted. Joe Jackson was the guy that almost picked it off for the Cardinals. It was intended for Technip to tie it in. Okay, 64 Joe Jackson, freshman. Drops into his tight end curl zone, hook zone right here, and the quarterback, look at this, throws it right to me. What's this, he said. Too bad he couldn't have hung on to that one. Fourth down as Subaric checks into the ball game to punt it away for the Mountaineers. High kick, and it's a dandy. Givens calls for the fair catch, and boy, takes it inside the five. That's one I think you would normally not field, but yeah. He yeah, did. The, 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 the heat <laughs> has taken its toll. Poor Ernest, uh, normally when you would not make a fair catch inside your own 10-yard ten, ten line, Don, as, let alone inside your own five. Chances are, odds are, if you, if you let that one go, it's going to go into the end zone. Gibbons will leave the game, and I would bet that Howard Schnellenberger will probably remind him of that. It's called a 10-yard rule. Also, this is part of the whole learning experience. Jay Gruden, the freshman, in at quarterback. What a place to put a freshman in. <laughs> He's out of Tampa, Florida. Swayback was the ball carrier. He picks up about three tough yards. Jeff Casto, a junior from Clendenin, West Virginia, who's in defensively now. Gruden, as we mentioned, the freshman from Tampa, and a lot of talent. Six feet tall, 185 yards. 
Swayback tries the other side this time, and Casco was there again for the Mountaineers. I think you know a little bit about Mr. Gruden, don't you, Pete? Mr. Gruden and I go way back. Here's Jay taking the snap. A little uh, strong side sweep to Swayback. Once again, good defensive uh, pursuit. Gang tackling by West Virginia. Still more people coming to the ball. Yeah, Jay's dad and I worked together at Indiana University back in the uh, 70s. Gruden out of the I formation backfield. Gives it off to Adams. Not much there for John. Number 97 in the blue again, Casto. Okay, here's Jay. They're just... Seems like they want to get out of the shadow of that defensive uh, end zone, the end zone back in there, rather, and just trying to run the ball straight ahead to pick up enough yards for first down. But, uh, West Virginia came uh, right straight through and got the runner for no gain, fourth down. Kirk Kennedy drops back in punt formation for the Cardinals. Gets the kick away. Johnson goes back to the 46 of the Mountaineers trying to find some blockers, but a good one-on-one -on -one tackle that time by Chris Sellers of the Cardinals. 12 minutes and 12 seconds remaining in this football game in Morgantown. West Virginia has an advantage over Louisville of 45 to 7. We'll return in just a moment. It's a new morning. It's a good time for a McDonald's taste. You're gonna find in a fresh baked biscuit, bacon, egg, and cheese, crispy bacon. It's the one for me. It's a new biscuit. Crack a fresh egg. Top that bacon with fresh grade A. Bacon, egg, and cheese. Because it's a good time for the great taste of McDonald's. Now through September 29th, McDonald's is offering any fresh baked biscuit sandwich with egg for just 79 cents. So come get them while they're hot. Now, every weeknight, this is the place for Night Owl movie fans because Cinema 41 is back by popular demand. We've got action. Romance. I love you both. Suspense. And everything in between with great stars like Elizabeth Taylor, Chuck Norris, Walter Matthau, and the list goes on. So every weeknight, tune in for Hollywood's Best where the stars shine bright, Cinema 41. Mountaineers have it just shy of the midfield stripe. Tempco. Hands it off to a new back into the game, Andre Johnson. So coach Don Nealon getting a chance to use a lot of troops today. Don Johnson, a junior out of St. Mary's, Ohio, on the defensive play for the Cardinals. Gain of three, second down and seven for West Virginia. One wide out to the right. Straight up the middle, Craig Taylor, who's in at the fullback position now. Defense still hammering away at him, Don. I'm, I'm impressed the way they're hanging in there. They're, they're still sticking. They're still hitting. They're still running. They're going after people. Uh, they could be doing a lot of different things with the score the way it is, but they're still hanging in there, and uh, they're going to improve. They're going to get better each week. Ball at the 45 of the Cardinals, third down and about four. Temko wants to put it up and does. It's complete on the near side to Ronaldo Turnbull, the third string tight end. And Turnbull takes it inside the Cardinal 35 to the 32. Antonio Davis on the stop. Okay, here we are with a slight half roll. Whiteout's just doing a down and out enough for the first down. Good execution. Nice strong arm by the quarterback. Wiggins came up a little bit too far to the outside. He'll get better. He's another one of those good young freshmen that uh, will get nothing but better with time, Don. Long count by Timko. Andre Johnson again, straight up the middle. Paul Shaler, the junior from Temple Terrace, Florida. It's his first stop of the day. Second down and a little bit less than five yards to go. Just up 
White to the far side of the field. Also over there is Phillips. No question, you can hear that plastic popping on there down. The guys are still popping, they're still getting after it. Here's a replay. Once again, the big old line from West Virginia, Mountaineers coming right at you. Look at this, four, five guys in on the tackle. Jackson and Shaler make the stop on Craig Taylor, the ball carrier. Straight up the middle again, Andre Johnson. The Mountaineers just going right at the heart of the Cardinal defense. Ziegler see, on the defensive play. You'll see Ziegler, another freshman, coming in right there. That, he was a, a three, uh, state of Florida qualified for three different events in track. High jump, he can high jump taller than he is. He's 6'3", he can high jump 6'4". He runs the hurdles. Good athlete, Don. Taylor gets the call this time from Tempco. Battaglia, Battaglia on the stop for the Cardinals. Well, he's, he's one kid I'm really impressed with today. He's been all over the place. Matt Battaglia, I think he's out of Atlanta. Atlanta, Georgia. Led his high school team to a couple of good years as a junior and senior. Led his team in tackles, and I know he's going to be leading. If not leading, be way up there in tackles for Louisville this year. Moss in for Ziegler on the Cardinal defense. And Craig Taylor comes to the near side of the field with a flag down. Avery Marshall, the senior out of Shelbyville, Kentucky. Well, here's, here's replay. Right in there, just, just stuff the deep, stuff the offense. We got a holding play on one of the Mountaineers. How about them ears? Crotchet checks into the ball game, bringing the play from the Mountaineer bench. 8.43 to go in the game. Mountaineers on top, 45 to seven as they move the football back to the 24 yard line. And it's gonna be third down and around 14 to go for the Mountaineers as we look at it from the end zone. Tempko marks the signals to the far side of the field. Now he wants to come back to the near side. Throws on the run and almost intercepted. Cosby almost picked it off at the five. Krawczyk was the intended receiver, and that time we saw some scrambling by Mike Tempko. Okay, good defense by Louisville. Contain the quarterback. You can't let the quarterback run out there all day long. Contain the quarterback. No one's open. He circles back. You got good pressure. And watch Cosby come right around the receiver, right there. Oh, almost had an interception. So on fourth down and around 14, the Mountaineers with the advantage will go for it. Timko fakes the draw, looks deep into the corner of the end zone for Smith. I believe it's Smith and he has the touchdown. Anthony Wiggins was back there on Harvey Smith, the junior from Roseville, PA, and that makes the Mountaineer fans happy. Wiggins was all over this guy. Timko puts it in a perfect spot. Watch, we 